What do we want? Safe streets. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safe streets. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safe streets. When do we want it? Now. My brothers, they young out here, and they can't even come outside no more. They can't even come outside when it's past eight o'clock, and it's the summertime. In the last two months, it's been like 15 killings, 16 killings. That's people dying. There's no, no telling how many people just got shot. It's been a long, hot summer for many living in American cities. The teen unemployment rate is at its highest point in 60 years. And violent crime is rising in mid-sized cities across the country. Memphis, Orlando, Charlotte, and New Orleans are just a few. While presidential campaigns grab headlines by sniping at each other. But is he ready to lead? The widespread hopelessness rarely makes national headlines. Just four miles from the Senate office buildings in Washington, D.C., a single neighborhood has lost 22 people to street violence this summer. To shoot two 13-year-old children in the back or shoot them as they're trying to get away is the most cowardice act I have seen in 18 years. In the early hours yesterday, one person was stabbed and seven people were shot, one of them a 13-year-old boy who later died. Yeah, man, everybody keep on crying about people who's killing. Yeah, tell these gun people, man, stop killing and stuff. My cousin got shot a couple of months ago back in April. My best friend got shot last, last year, my nigga Ryan. If you kill my man, I'm going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Basically like that. So it ain't going it ain't going to never stop cuz everybody going to keep killing each other. People to like let things go cuz somebody could have got hurt in this crew and this person got hurt in this crew. So somebody could be like, I'm not letting it go. I'm not letting it go. No, he hurt my man or no, he stabbed me or something like that. It could be anything. Youth gangs or neighborhood crews as they're called in DC have been linked to much of the violence in DC this summer. Teenagers drive the streets of rival neighborhoods, shooting indiscriminately. The violence is so out of control, D.C. police have resorted to extreme measures, at times setting up roadblocks to block off the entire neighborhood from outsiders. And D.C. is not alone. Other cities, like Chicago, have also suffered flare-ups of violence this summer. Congressman Danny Davis, who represents many of Chicago's troubled neighborhoods, says the thousands of men leaving prisons with few prospects for work are a key factor. There has been so much violence and so much crime. We are the most incarcerated nation on the face of the earth. We continue to spend enormous sums of money caring for individuals who could care for themselves if we were to put more emphasis on prevention and more emphasis on rehabilitation. You can't just take these kids, bring them in, you know, tell them, you know, don't go mug anybody anymore and think anything's going to happen. And that's what the system's been doing. They need intensive services. They need long-term services. These are kids with big deficits educationally, emotionally, socially. Um, and they need a lot of assets to be able to, to sort of turn their lives around. Once you put a kid in the adult system, they're gone for good. We're all the way over in Iraq. Don't we have a war here? Isn't there a war going on here? These kids could go take $40 and go buy a Chinese-made gun. Something's wrong with that. How, you, how come you can't stop that? But yet we can go to Iraq and try to, because we heard that he had weapons. We know they have weapons here. And we went over there and did all of that and forgot about us here. Till we can get people back to work, we're gonna have violence. That's if right. people don't got jobs and money, they're gonna do dumb things to get the money. People are right. selling drugs, killing, that's what's mostly for money. Like we me, had if, so, if, if they I gave know. him a job, he won't tell me. It's gonna be a chain reaction, that's the right. chain reaction, chain reaction. That's right. You know, when people wanna go to a party, everybody tell where a party at. <laughs> So why nobody can't tell me, okay, it's a job they hiring, okay? I love y'all. I want y'all to succeed, okay? These kids want to work. They want a life. They want, they, and, and it's a shame that our leaders aren't focusing on they, how you doing, baby? I'm focusing on these young people like they should. It's, it's sad. It angers me.
Recent studies support Wilhelmina Lawson's connection between jobs and violence. Johns Hopkins found that while overall violence has gone down in the last decade, the number of homicides involving guns was going up 31% among young black males. Another study estimates 72% of black male high school dropouts were without jobs, even before the economy hit the skids. We do have a labor market downturn, and when that happens, all else equal, young people, and especially teenagers, are often the hardest hit because they're the, they're the most marginal workers in the economy. They're the last ones to be hired, the first ones to be let go. Young people and disadvantaged young people uh, are facing uh, big challenges uh, in our labor market. Uh, some of them are short term. The next few years will not be a good time for these people. And we need to do a better job as a society of, of increasing their opportunities and their options. Uh, and then it would be fair for us to demand that they take responsibility and, and, and uh, keep themselves out of trouble. The economy is so bad and there is so much of a lack of direction for improving it. What do you expect these individuals to do? Obviously many of them are standing on the corners every day, hollering crack and blow, peels and thrills, and of course they end up being a part of that large number of individuals who are indeed incarcerated and who will live in one way, shape, form, or fashion off of society for the rest of their lives. And so if we don't pay with investment in early childhood education on the front end, then we pay for prison. So we pay one way, or we pay another way. Is there a commitment in Congress right now to do something about this, you think? Not enough. Not nearly enough.